Judge Magazine, Politics, Presidents, and Political Cartoons, A Closer Look, presented by the Arkell Museum. Beginning as a street phenomenon, by the end of the 19th century, political cartoons were an important part of the growing popularity of newspapers and magazines. While their often provocative nature had the added benefit of attracting readers and boosting sales in an intensely competitive market, their main impact came from giving artists and magazines the opportunity to express their opinions surrounding societal views and events, while often focusing on politics. So, what is a political cartoon? The Library of Congress defines it as a graphic with caricatures of public figures expressing the opinion of the artist. Artists that create these cartoons use humor and satire to connect with and persuade their audience. Defined as the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics, satire becomes critical to the artist's goals. In its weekly publications, Judge Magazine capitalized on that satirical nature to comment on parts of its society. Purchased in 1885 by publisher William J. R. Kell, brother of Beechnut Packing Co. president and museum founder Bartlett R. Kell, the magazine was used in part to attack the Democratic administration of Grover Cleveland. To this end, one significant topic Judge Magazine commented on was the free trade versus protectionism debate. Defined as an international trade system left to its natural course without tariffs, quotas, or other restrictions, free trade policies typically impose few restrictions on imports and exports. Protectionism, on the other hand, is defined as the theory or practice of shielding a country's domestic industries from foreign competition by taxing imports. These ideas became a large part of the 1892 presidential election, which saw Grover Cleveland and Benjamin Harrison as the two major political players. Free traders like Cleveland supported tariffs, or taxes, to create necessary revenue only. Protectionists, like Harrison, believe that tariffs should also produce a surplus, more money than the government needed to function, thus offering financial protection to the nation. One of the cartoons published in Judge Magazine at this time was Political Columbus Who Will Not Land in 92. The artist Bernhard Gillum portrayed Cleveland as an unsure Christopher Columbus at the bow of democracy's ship, which is propelled ineffectively by a ragged free trade sail. Political cartoons often use famous historical events as a way to connect with their readers and emphasize their point. Like today, Christopher Columbus was a well-known historical figure, and the election fell on the same year as the anniversary of his famous journey. The depiction of Cleveland as an unsure Christopher Columbus illustrated to the viewer that unlike the famous figure that led his crew across the sea, Cleveland would not be able to do the same for the United States government, or even democracy as a whole. The shabby sale furthers this agenda by illustrating how the ideas that facilitate Cleveland's campaign, like free trade, surely cannot effectively move democracy forward. The sale is also patched by other events that were current at the time and that illustrated the ineffective nature of the Democratic Party. These included a misleading labor report from the New York State Commissioner of Labor Statistics, Democrat Charles F. Peck, and controversial letters from the leader of a well-known labor federation, Terrence Vincent Powderly. The cartoon also includes a dialogue caption below it. In it, Cleveland Columbus says, I don't see land. The despairing crew responds, and you never will with that rotten canvas. Not only does this solidify the view of Cleveland as an inadequate leader, it also attacks the very platform he stands on. Prominent senators, business leaders, and other officials who support the Democratic Party occupy the boat. They do not appear to be navigating any better than Cleveland Columbus himself, but instead stare out into the ocean. This may symbolically call the competency of the Democratic Party into question and emphasize Judge Magazine's negative opinion of it. While frequently masked behind humor and satire, every aspect of a political cartoon represents an important part of the artist's message. This cartoon attacks the Democratic Party from multiple sides and uses the past to accentuate its failings in a way that would have been relatable to its readers. By presenting their opinion in this format, Political cartoons are able to make the reader think about current and past events while attempting to sway their opinion in an engaging way. It is there that the true impact of political cartoons is found.